Good morning. Welcome back. It is Sunday. Big racing day today, of course. You got the Grand Prix of Monaco, which is just should have recently ended because we're recording this early. As well as the Indy 500 and the Coke 600. So I'm going to have to find a comfy, comfy spot on the couch and nestle in for a long, long day of racing. As we said in yesterday's video, Friday, I went to the uh, Indianapolis... Uh, racing memorabilia show. It's one of the largest racing memorabilia shows around. And of course, it's very, very Indy 500 centric. Uh, got to talk to a lot of cool people down there, vendors and, and, and fans and such. Seen a lot of uh, really cool items. And picked up some picked up some cool things along the way. As you know, I mostly do cards and die cast. They did have a few uh, drivers there signing autographs. We'll get to those here shortly. But I want to show you the items that we did pick up. Um, when they don't have a lot of die cast and a lot of cards, they did have a little tiny bit. I do look for things like programs. So I got some programs. Got a 1974 USAC yearbook. Kind of thumbed through this one. It's got a lot of neat pictures, a lot of neat stats. Um, this one... I didn't realize it when I got it has uh, somebody cut something out here. 73 USAC magazine. But again, much like the previous book, it has a lot of nice pictures, stats, and so forth. From 2007, uh, Honda Grand Prix St. Pete. So IndyCar and the Acura Sports Car Challenge. And again, just a lot of you know programs with driver info, race info. And plenty of advertisements, if you're into that sort of thing. Then up next, I may or may not have this one. Not real sure. But it's the inaugural Grand Prix of Indianapolis from 2014. The first IndyCar race on the road course. So I may or may not have that one. But at the price that I got these at, I wasn't going to walk away from it. From 1989, the Toyota Long Beach Grand Prix program. You see little Al and Jay Leno, because they ran the Toyota Pro Celebrity Race during that weekend. And a lot of these have the starting lineups in these, so I think that's super cool. A little piece of history with it. 1973 USAC season yearbook. So I'm not sure all the drivers. I think it's Danny and Geis in the middle. That might be Butch Hartman, obviously Al Sr. Who's this guy? I don't know. I'm not real familiar with a lot of the USAC guys because they ran a stock car series that competed against NASCAR. But some of the drivers I've heard of, some of them I haven't. Uh, from 1985, the Detroit News Grand Prix. Of course, that was on the Oval. I believe it was a 150-mile race on the Oval. There you see Al Jr. and Al Sr. So very cool cover there. <clears throat> from 1987, the Bosch Spark Plug Grand Prix from Nazareth with Mario on the cover. And I'm going to move some of these to the side because we got more to go. From 1984, another Detroit News Grand Prix. And of course, they ran, they had a road course at Michigan, a Roval esque road course that the IMSA cars down here ran on. Um, from 1983, the Detroit News Grand Prix. So this was somebody that, whoever had this collection, only went to Long Beach, Miami, and uh, Detroit. Um, from 2005, the Firestone Indy 400 at Michigan. There you see Danica, and I can't tell who that is. Might be Buddy Rice on the cover. I really can't tell. But there's the starting lineup for that one. And I didn't keep the starting lineup in there because it didn't fit very well. And we have a lot of Marlboro 500s. So without opening these up and looking for the years, they've all got different covers. But still super cool. And these are all basically from like 88 to 92-esque. 93-ish, not esque. So this one has the actual year on the cover, 1989. And generally, this race would run the weekend after the NASCAR Talladega race. There's another one. 
And there you see the uh, got the starting lineup in here as well. <clears throat> got a few more programs, I promise. Just a few more. We have um, the inaugural US 500 program. First year the cart IRL split with the starting lineup. And again, the starting lineup didn't line up right properly in there, so I didn't want to leave it in there and get it all bent up. From 1982, the Rex Mays Classic at Milwaukee. Oops. From 1983, the Rex Mays Classic from Milwaukee. I believe that's Gordon Johncock there and Pat Patrick's car on the cover. <clears throat> From 1997, another US 500. It does have a little damage there, so I imagine they spilt some soda on it and got stuck against something. And then the starting lineup for that race. And I really don't even remember watching either one of those races. Need to go on to YouTube and find them. Uh, 1984, the Rex Mays Dana 200. Tom Sneva there on the cover. 19, I think this is 86, 87. Very similar cover to the Michigan race at Michigan that year. The cup race at Michigan. Uh, this is at Milwaukee, the Miller American race. <clears throat> of course, they went away from the Rex Mays for whatever reason. Then we have a 1984 Michigan 500. Watch that race on YouTube. It was just an. It was it was a crazy race, a crash fest, a great finish. Um, a lot of storylines, a lot of things going on in that race. 1985 Michigan 500. Obviously, this is before the Marlboro sponsorship picked up. Mario Andretti on the cover. Great, great look there. Looks like we just have a few more of these to go. Then we'll get into some other stuff that you'll like. 1986, Michigan 500. And this was Emo's first win as an Indy car driver. And we have 1986, Pepsi Cola 250. So you have Rick Mears there for the short Indy car race of the year. And then the ASA cars. So that's a lot of fun. I'm trying to see if I recognize any of them in here right now. Uh, the 99's Trickle there with the Paps Blue Ribbon on the hood. Um, I'm, I'm probably, if I could see the numbers, we'd do a little bit better off. That one right there with the says something racing that might be Jim Sauter. I don't know. But <clears throat> very cool. And then they had a couple racing pictorial magazines. This one's from the spring of 83. And I really like this one because it has a lot of uh, color photos of all the Indy cars from that year and just racing pictorial cover a lot of different racing series and I was really surprised to see this one from uh, 1976 racing pictorial and it does have some writing up here but you know I think I only paid 50 cents or a dollar for this one so I wasn't going to worry about the writing and it's in great shape racing pictorial is one of those magazines that had a lot of information in it <clears throat> so anyway and also picked up i'm not a real real big fan on picking stuff like this up but they had them for a great price so it got a visor uh by kenny that kenny breck would have used of course that's aj foyt's team and a visor uh scott pruitt with the Budweiser True Sports team. So a couple cool things there. And uh, the vendor that had those had them super, super... I don't want to call them super cheap because it is what it is. It's just a visor. It's nothing spectacular. But it's still a pretty cool piece. Uh, I've always wanted to start getting things like this. Got a media guide. So all the Valvoline stuff. And, you know, it's it's got a lot of information here. I'll show you the pictures here in just a second. But it's like, uh, talks about drag racing, the drag racing teams, Curb Motorsports, their NASCAR team, uh, Rick Gallus, the IndyCar team. So, you know, this is how they did their media guides back in the day. I'm going to take these pictures out. And, you know, I thought this was going to be a bunch of drivers that I'd never heard of. But I was wrong. So 
we've all heard of Jeff Brabham, son of Sir Jack Brabham, Poncho Carter, Roberto Moreno drove for Gallus in the IndyCar series. Mario Andretti was like, let's slap a Valvoline hat on them and they'll be part of the family. Bobby Rahal, AJ Foyt, and to kind of give you an idea how big these are, here's a trading card. So it's like one, two, about five times the size of a trading card. So these would be cool, some of these to get autographed. Tom Sneva, like I said, let's slap a Valvoline hat on them, you're part of the family now. Ron Bouchard was driving for Curb Motorsports in 86. Shirley Muldowney, legendary drag racer. Gene Hackman. So I believe, I, I want to say that that very well may be the actor. I'm, I'm not familiar. Then a couple car shots here. So you have, uh, I believe that's Jeff Brabham, because it's the Gallus car. Uh, this is the Swap Shop Racing Team. A.J. Foyt would have driven this one in the Daytona 24 Hours. Yeah, there you see Gilmore Foyt. And then this is Ron Bouchard's Cup car from 86, one of those Grand Prix 2 Plus 2s. Look how tiny that deck lid is. I mean, you sit a, you sit a couple cans of Coke on there, and you ain't, got, you ain't got a spot to sit your lunch. So, uh, you know, that was, I got this for a super good price. Really, really, uh, you know, like I said, I wanted to start getting some of these if I can pick them up. So anyway, we're going to talk about the, the autographs now. So I didn't have anything of this guy, but I went ahead and went through the line to get this. But former IndyCar driver Stefan Gregoire, a nice little hero card there, as did Tom Bigelow. So we'll zoom in so you can see the autograph. And that thing between the word Tom and the word his name, Tom Bigelow, it's something he was drawing on every single autograph. So we'll let you see the... And these are just blank backs, so... I, I was like five minutes late to getting in line for this next guy, but I picked up a hero card, Tom Sneva. <clears throat> of course, that's the car he won Indy with. There's a look at it. Uh, that had to be probably the year after, maybe. I'm not sure. And then the victory lane. And that was his final NASCAR start in 1987. And something that I just noticed, look at the nose of the car where it says 5T. And right there it says 5T. Back in the day... Uh, Indy would have, you know, 50, 60, maybe even 70 entries or more. But what you have to understand is you had two teams, or one team would have two cars. So Sneva would enter the 5 and the 5T. So what would happen is Indy does their qualifying a lot differently now, but you would have three opportunities with each car. So if you ran car 5 and you ran out, qualifying weekend number one you went out twice and waved it off then if you went out a third time and waved it off that car was pulled for the month that car was done then you had to go to another car but anyway Kenny Schrader was there asked for an unsigned hero card because I did get a couple things signed and I didn't want to be like hey can you give me one of those and one of these and one of those so he did have a really cool federated auto parts uh dirt trap uh hero card and when, when he was signing, I told him, I said, man, you should have won the 89 Daytona 500. He goes, yep. And, uh, and we even had a big tank, too. He says, just my partner, who was DW at the time, his teammate, he says, my partner just had a bigger one. So uh, kind of interesting there. So uh, I did have, I did get Tom to sign my uh, ANS card. And like I said, he it looks like a race car. I don't know what is in between the first and last name there. But it was just something he was drawing on every single one of them. And like I said, uh, Schrader was signing, so he signed this one. I told him that this is one of my favorite cars that he drove, and he said he really liked the Skull car as well. And then I had came across these, and um, I don't remember when I picked them up, but I always liked the Red Baron car. I liked it more when he drove it for Junie Donlevy, but when Bam did it for a couple of races. And you can see it's a Walmart and Red Baron thing, so I don't know if it was something that you just pick these cards up at a stack or whatever, but uh, really cool there. And one thing that I thought was super cool, it looked like Schrader had a stack of uh, uh, trading cards. And if, you know, <clears throat> if, if kids or whatever didn't have anything, I mean, he'd sign the hero card and then he'd sign one of those random trading cards as well. But one last thing, and I thought this was super cool. 
This is another reason that I like buying programs. When you go to the track and you have a program, sometimes the program gets used as an envelope. Oh, we're just going to tuck this in here, tuck that in there. You put it away. Most people just forget about it. They don't know what they've had. I, I need to go through all my programs to see if there's stuff tucked away in these. But I was doing this last night, as, or uh, Friday night when I was going through everything, and found a few really cool vintage hero cards. So this one, this has to be from the early 80s. But Kevin Kogan, actually, no, it doesn't. This is actually from 89, because this is the car that he crashed it in. So late 80s. The picture just was weird. But Kevin Kogan, this is the one. I was looking at this one when I said this. Um, this is definitely early 80s here, based on the the car. But it's Roger Mears. And I think that's a facsimile signature on there, because I was looking at it really closely. I don't think that's a, a, a live autograph. But very cool hero card there. And you can tell that these are very, very flimsy. But the condition of these is outstanding. Then I found, um, ironically, because Tom Sneva was at the autograph signing, it's funny that I found this one in a program. An original 1983 Tom Sneva. I believe that's his car owner right there. And it talks about the, the Texaco star. Yeah, George Bignotti. So, super cool there. And our final one, I was super stoked about this one. Because I don't have any from this guy or any from this series. But this is definitely from the, the mid-80s. Probably 84, 85-ish. Al Holbert. Porsche 962 Hero Card. Super cool. So, there's a little bit of information about Mr. Holbert. Of course, if you know anything about Al, he was killed in a plane crash in 1988, I believe September of 88, but wow. And like I said, I could go down there with a lot more money and bought a lot more cool stuff. They had uniforms, they had um, race used pieces like side pods and, and a couple wings and so forth. But, you know, I, I seen the, the couple of vendors that had the... I had to make two trips to my car because of all the programs that I bought. And it, it was just really cool. And then interacting with people. One guy had a stack of the, the Winston Cup, uh, the hardback coffee table books. And he had the 1988 one. And that's one that I'm looking for. I, I don't have it, but I will get it eventually. But he wanted $100 for it. It is a hard find. It's very, very hard to find. But I've got like 89 through whenever they quit producing them. But had a lot of fun. Definitely putting it on my calendar for next year. We'll try to get down there a little bit earlier so that, that way I can get all the autographs. Today they had Andy Hillenberg, Poncho Carter, and Ari Leindyke. But I think I've already got all those guys. I know I've got Hillenberg. I know I've got Leindyke. Not sure about Poncho or not. I'm pretty sure I did get him one year at Legends Day. And that's today, too, at the track, which I totally forgot about. But or yesterday at the track, because obviously I'm doing this on Saturday, because we're going to be at the Speedrome all night, and I won't have time to get my videos up. So I want to just get a head start for Sunday. So long video, sorry about that, but a lot of super cool stuff. I think you guys, especially a lot of you guys that like the IndyCar stuff, will enjoy this video. So anyway, thanks again for watching. Enjoy the races today, and we will see you tomorrow.